Hello everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, I hope you're liking the Game of Thrones style hairstyle. It's nothing to do with today's video, but I am going to be trying to work out um, the new song from season 8, Jenny's theme? Jenny's tune? Jenny's song? Jenny's song! <laughs> so uh, I thought I'd get in the mood with Daenerys Targaryen hair. Anyway, moving on. Today I am going to be unboxing the Kehlani Whistles. I really hope that's how you say it. The Kehlani Whistles that I ordered um, pretty recently. They came really quickly and this is how they come packaged. Some really nice um, stamps on here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to unbox these for you, unwrap them and show you how they come delivered, um, my first impressions of how they sound and yeah, we'll go from there. So as you can see, these whistles have come wrapped in a nice bubble wrapped uh, envelope here. If I open this up, we also have a second bubble wrapped envelope. And on the inside again, all nice and sealed, we have the whistles in their own bubble wrapped envelopes. So lots of secure packaging. Also with the whistles came this caring and cleaning your tin whistle guide sheet gives you some information about your whistle how to tune your whistle uh working the tuning slide and caring for the tuning slide and also cleaning instructions for the whistle so i will go over that um shortly so if i open up these whistles i did actually get three i have opened one already this is the c whistle I also ordered a D and an E flat, so I'm going to open these up for you now. One whistle here, and another whistle here. Now I wanted to leave these two wrapped up um, just to see if any tarnishing happened on the nickel over the last few days. The bottom whistle is the whistle that has been out of the packet for the longest, and the top whistle is well, has just been removed from the packet. So as you can see, the top whistle is more shiny. The bottom whistle has already reacted with the air and my fingers, even though I haven't really played it. I've just got it out and yeah, given it a quick blow. But you can see the top whistle is a lot more shiny. So if you do want to keep these whistles in their original super shiny form, you will need to clean and polish them. You should be able to clean this with polishing cloths that you can buy online to keep this top shine if you want to. Now the more you play them, um, I would imagine these whistles will start looking a little bit like my Chris Wall Sweet Brass as you can see on this one. The finger holes remain shiny but everything else tarnishes to a dull sort of colour. So I presume the same will occur with these Kalani whistles. But as I say, I've just got them out of the packet, so I don't actually know. Now, on first impressions, um, this is the sea whistle. It's the largest of the three. My very first impression when I pulled this out was the fact that the head, the mouthpiece, is ridiculously heavy. I had no idea. I've heard so many um, fantastic reviews about Kalani whistles that I, I don't know, no one ever mentioned the fact that the weight of the head is like way heavier than any other whistle I own. So for example, the balance point on this whistle is is here. The balance point on my Chris Wall whistle is here. So you can see this is more central to the whistle. It's not quite, it's about there. But the Kalani whistle, there is so much more pipe to the right hand side than there is head because the weight of this head is very very heavy so yeah with my other whistles they i mean they drop down at the head but not overly so even the whistles that have metal heads but this particular whistle seems really heavy on the mouthpiece end it's not as noticeable on the smaller whistles although yeah i mean the e flat's still kind of heavy the d whistle i wouldn't have noticed as much um but definitely on the c whistle but as far as whistles go, I mean, the majority of it is in the mouthpiece. So I'm guessing that is why uh, all the weight is here, all the work and craftsmanship is here in the whistle head. Now these are tunable, as you can see I've removed this. I did grease this a little bit, um, but you can see there's kind of tarnishing around the top there. That's not a problem. They're quite smooth, um, although they don't come apart easily, which is good. I do have some 
other whistles that um, you kind of go to flick the air out of them and the head flies off, my Susato whistles in particular. So you, you could flick air out of this with no problem. Um, you wouldn't lose the top half of your mouthpiece, which is fantastic. Also on the sea whistle here, I don't know if you can see that, but there is a little line um, along the front. There you go. So this indicates um, the central line of the whistle. So when you're lining up your um, finger holes with your mouthpiece, you know exactly where the center of the whistle is. So everything is nicely lined up. So you can see here we have the Kalani whistle head in a nice close up. Uh, the majority of the whistle head appears to be brass with this nice plastic on the mouthpiece. And if I give you a full rotation, you can see that it's got this nice detail up here with the plastic block. And the craftsmanship here really is superb. It is a very neat, uh, well-finished looking head. As I said, the weight is spectacular. It's heavier than my MK Pro whistle head. As for the rest of the tube, as I said, it's um, very similar to other whistles I've had. You can see that the holes are nice and neat. Nicely spaced, nicely sized. They're not particularly large holes, which makes this easy to cover with all fingers, even if you have small and thin fingers. But I would imagine um, there's plenty of space there for half holing, so I'll give that a go for you guys now. So this is my first real whirl on the sea whistle. I'll give you um, a low scale. I'll try and give you a high scale. So the bank pressure is good. You don't need too much air to push into that second octave. Um, I got right the way up to the top and onto the third octave D there without any real problems. Um, when I first pulled this out of the box, um, I played it like I play my Chris Wall Sweet Brass and I shouldn't have. I gave this to my husband and he immediately thought it was amazing. My first impressions were that it sounded more like a cheap whistle to me than, for example, my sweet brass, but it was me. It was my playing. It is not the whistle. It is me. And I find this is often the case. Um, if you have a new whistle, it is because you don't know how to play it. And that is why it doesn't sound what you think it's going to sound like. So this is why I'm not reviewing this whistle right now. I'm going to get used to these whistles. I'm going to play them for a few weeks and I will get back to you with a detailed review on my actual opinions of them. This is just my first impression. You cannot give a genuine review on a whistle when you first play it because you don't know how to play that whistle. Every single whistle is different. Every single whistle requires a certain amount of air on certain notes to get them to sound perfectly in key, needs different ways of approach. And this particular whistle needs a lot more air than, for example, my Chris Wall Sweet Brass. And you need to play louder. You can't play this whistle in a reserved and quiet way. You need to play this whistle loud and proud. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I shall have to get used to that. So this is the C. I also ordered a D and an E flat whistle. Um, I had a fantastic suggestion from one of you as soon as I'd ordered, like a few days after I'd ordered, saying, ah, oh, are you going to get a brass one and a nickel one? Because I would love to buy one and I don't know the difference. I'd like to hear the difference. Well, I was too late. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did contact Kalani Whistles, but they'd already been sent out. So sorry, guys. Unfortunately, I only have the nickel. But I bought these because um, I quite like the sound of nickel whistles myself. Um, I have a few generation whistles and the nickel versions I prefer the sound of, uh, which is bizarre because my current favourite whistle is brass. Um, but I liked the look of these whistles. I like the fact that they had this two-tone colour. Now, I ordered an E-flat whistle because I don't have this key, so uh, this is how it sounds. <laughs> Now that is far easier to play than the C. 
which is bizarre, and I much prefer the sound of it. Very odd. I must admit I'm not a fan of sea whistles. I haven't found a, a sea whistle that I genuinely like. Comments down below as to why that is, please. So let's try the D whistle. Nice. Now, um, I'm going to give you a little play of the cross fingering notes on these whistles. Seems just as strong on the half hole top or the cross fingering on the D. The sound on the E flat as I have it currently uh, gives me a different note slightly. But it's equally as strong on the C whistle. It's not as strong as the other top notes. So I think on the C whistle I'd probably use a half hole on the top. Now one thing I have noticed with these whistles is that as far as I can see, there is no indication of what key you're playing, which I think would have been a nice touch. Obviously you can see the difference in size of these whistles, the difference in pipe length, and the difference in the size of the head. Now the one thing that I've heard a lot of people mention is that they tend to drool and dribble and spit a lot playing Kalani whistles. Um, I've noticed that already just playing a few notes there is a little bit of condensation, spit, saliva, whatever you'd like to call it, leaking from the top here. and. It's meant to be that the curved windway uh, stops that, but I know a lot of people have trouble. Now I haven't warmed up these whistles at all, so I'm going to warm this up and then I'm going to play through uh, a few tunes and I'll give you then a close up to see what the whistle mouthpiece looks like. I'll start with a shakeout, a warm up, and let's play. There is nothing there, there is no spit. But that is three very short little tunes, so maybe if I play more, I will have that same problem. When I do a review of these, I will update you on whether I've had any issues with these. I'll play them in the meantime with some song requests that you guys have asked for. In the caring for and cleaning your whistle, um, basically cleaning instructions suggests to put some warm water in a mug, add a small squirt of washing up liquid, submerge the headpiece of the whistle in the water and allow to soak. Five to ten minutes is normally sufficient. Leave for longer if the whistle has serious buildup of grime. Now this in particular, if you guys have seen my um, how to stop your whistle clogging video, is an immediate suggestion for how to stop your Kalani whistles from clogging. The surfactant um, kind of coats the inside of the whistle mouthpiece and stops 
condensation building up. So that is why they've suggested that. It is to remove dirt and ground, but it's also to leave that layer and stop your whistle clogging up. And you can do that every time you start experiencing problems with clogging with your whistle. Um, it's got, meanwhile, prepare a narrow strip of cardboard that can be used to clean out the air channel. Cardboard from a cereal box works really well. You may wish to polish the brass parts of your whistle occasionally. It's best to use water-based polish. The tuning slide of the whistle will need a little grease occasionally. Copper grease, which is available in hardware shops or motor factors, is recommended as it repels moisture well and gives good action. So that is it for my overview and unboxing of the Kalani whistles. Um, my first impressions are they are very well made, they look beautiful, and the higher key whistles sound delightful to my ears. I'm not as keen on the sound of the sea, but as I said, I haven't found a sea whistle that I actually like yet. So um, maybe that's just me. The build quality and the craftsmanship on the heads is fantastic. I like the two-tone, I like the sound of the nickel coating. Um, yeah, they seem easy to play. You don't need as much air as I thought you would, but you do have to blow these loud and proud um, and not be afraid of the sounds you're going to make. So that is my first impressions. I like the way they come packaged. The delivery was fast. The price is reasonable for the quality of the whistle. They do tarnish a little when they've been out. Um, but yeah, they give you suggestions on how to polish them, so that shouldn't be a problem. All looks good. So when I've gotten used to playing these, I'll probably play the higher keys more often than I'll play the C. That's just how it goes. But I will try and play all three of them in multiple different videos over the next few weeks, and then I'll get back to you with a genuine review on these in a few weeks down the line. So that's it from me. Until Friday when we play another tune, I'm going to be spending some time working out how to play Jenny's song from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Until then. Happy whistling. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.